credibility. So this credibility, okay, Tammy, I think you're going to lead, start with this. Yeah. So there's kind of like two levels of credibility. The macro is kind of the, the things that we know are common, your testimonials, your reviews, third-party accreditations, memberships, or endorsements. You know, just that's people saying good things about you. You know, you've got these success stories so that your prospects can see themselves you know, or reflected in some way. So those are really important credibility indicators. The lesser known ones are, you know, the page speed piece that Ben spoke about. So if your site's slow to load, it's going to, you know, it's going to question, well, you know, maybe it's an older school or, you know, whatever. there's going to be some question marks in the credibility. Is there an easy way to phone? Do you have a physical address? You know, are you a legitimate institution? It's just little micro um trust indicators under the credibility. And then you know, if you've got proof in your numbers and your stats. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so all these little things matter. Yeah. And those are simple little things. Those are what we call the macro. And then when we start to go deeper on it, we get into what behavioral science. We have a <laughs> behavioral science expert who can help us go really deep on this. Yeah, so I want to talk about the behavioral science behind credibility um, and basically the proof and research behind why credibility is so important uh, on your web page. And the idea of social proof has been around for over 50 years, so it's been well researched. And it's essentially the phenomenon um, of people using others' actions, preferences, and beliefs to determine their own. Um, so this can show up in lots of different, uh, lots of different ways. Um, this is just an example from Tesla who tweeted about their car award and also mentioned 124,000 people voted. So they're using a couple different elements of social proof, but um, like wisdom of crowds would be one. And then also showcasing the awards um, to give themselves some uh, credibility and authority. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then I thought it'd be interesting to go over some of the uh, social proof research, which there has been has been many. Um, the first image here is uh, describing a study that was done by Matthew Selganik, who is a professor of sociology. And basically he created an artificial music streaming platform and he had participants downloading songs. Um, about partway through the experiment, he artificially inflated the downloads of the least popular songs to see what happened. And after he artificially inflated those downloads, um, those songs actually became the most popular songs. So that just shows you the power of social proof in influencing um, people and what they prefer. Um, yeah. And then this second image here, uh, this is an experiment that was done by um, Robert Caldini, who coined the term um, social proof. And this was done in a hotel. Uh, so guests of a hotel were asked to reuse their towels. And in the room, there was pamphlets uh, with one of these three headings. And he uh, studied whether, oh, sorry, the number of people who reused their towels um, given the pamphlet that they were uh, they were given. Um, so if you want to in the Q&A, you can guess which one of these headings was most effective in getting the guests to reuse their towels. Um, yeah, so like all three of these headings are quite um, influential, I would say. And, you know, they're all very positive towards reusing your towels. So you wouldn't think that there's a huge difference. Um, but it turns out that number three, the third heading, um, was significantly more influential in getting guests to reuse their towels compared to the first two. Um, and that's the join your fellow guests. So that's the social proof. Yeah. So that's using social proof. That's using wisdom of crowds. That's, yeah, essentially saying other people are doing this, so you should do it. And that was much more effective than appealing to just saving the environment. It's... it's... Can could we think about marketing as um, Nancy Drew level psychology, right? Like we're just hunting. We're it's the we're we're trying to uncover the mysteries of the human mind and the, mm -hmm. the, the uncover the quirks of of human behavior. Because yeah. because if 
because th these are big samples or certainly the da like in all the social science, the sample sizes are big enough that it, it's, you can't attribute it just to like, oh, that particular group or this type of person in this particular area. Like this, this is human nature stuff. We're yeah. All psychologically wired in similar ways. Yeah. And we find things like social proof that that's a true description of something that's kind of universal. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like, it's rooted in, uh, it's ingrained in human psychology. You know, it's, okay. it's universal. Yeah. And, and these are the, this is the kind of technical description of those two tests. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, these are, these are some of the effects, um, that essentially underlie social proof. So basically like why, why does social proof work? Essentially. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the, uh, the effects, effects underneath that. There's the bandwagon effect, um, which you probably all heard of jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. Um, if you see other people do something, you, you're probably going to do the same. Um, and then there's also authority bias. So the inclination to believe the opinions of perceived authority figures. Yeah. Um, so this image there is of the, of a Sensodyne commercial, um, just kind of interesting that they ran two different tests, one with the dentists dressed normally, and then one with them wearing lab coats and the test with them wearing lab coats um made the consumers trust the brand more significantly more interesting uh, okay so the lesson just... for that is everyone get your presidents to put on lab coats <laughs> on the on the welcome yeah. to our school page yeah and, oh and it kind of ties in with getting professional photography you know you yeah. you want it to look professional you want to uh have perceived authority interesting okay so uh, digital marketing, so trust, reviews, and ratings. We got about eight minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this just shows how important social proof is today in digital marketing. Um, it's very important, if anything, becoming more important with the prevalence of star ratings and reviews and everything. So people are looking for reviews on your site um, to trust to trust your site. Um, just a few of the recent findings, 83% of customers trust reviews and rankings, or sorry, ratings more than advertising. Um, just a one star increase in a product star rating can increase sales by seven to 9%, um, which is pretty big. And the average consumer reads 10 reviews before feeling able to trust a business. Yeah. So. Well, I've noticed yeah. that in my own behavior when I buy something, right? I just yeah. look for, look for uh, look for context okay buy it and then look for reassurance that i didn't make a bad choice yeah absolutely right and yeah. that's the the world we live in and then we've got a test sasha we have a test here that kind of uh, sort of proves this out uh yeah i guess in a way like it speaks to how important it is to have um relatable and and credible testimonials mm -hmm. this is just a section on our landing page again on one of our clients landing page the top one it's just a single t um, testimonial and we tested it against the bottom. Uh, the difference between the two is not just the number of testimonials, but on the bottom one, you'll notice um, there's a little like avatar next to each person's name. And I, and I made it that way to kind of look like Google, you know, yeah. uh, and then below that, we, um, it tells you a little bit about the prospect and their different situations. So university graduate, working parent, uh, yeah. student working in field, college dropout, single parent, um yeah and it has a headline you know best money oh, ever yeah. spent on it that's a headline right it's yes. a it's a poll quote but it's functionally a headline yeah just so that it's easily scannable i guess yeah and so wow you know it seems small but if you do that for all of your programs landing pages it's it's a pretty big increase just for well, testimonials and you know. Well, that's the thing. So there's an 11% improvement on this, right? And re remembering that this is one element of a much bigger thing, right? This is like a, just a tiny piece of a much bigger picture. So you get, you string together enough of these little improvements yeah. and underground, 200 grand, 300 grand, or 1%, 2%, however you're measuring it. And it becomes a bigger and bigger and bigger impact. 